Hey Mervin. Hey Vinton. Yeah. So I was going to do something else. So I thought nothing as fancy as what you have done, of course. <laughs> so uh, I was going to show that uh, sine theta is approximately equal to theta for small angles. And then uh, Vitus over here, it, one of you guys can't see Vitus there, Vitus is smiling at me right now. <laughs> so Vitus thought uh, that it's too much and I should do something else. So then I started to explain to Vitus uh, what's the use of what I was talking about and uh, then he got fascinated. Yeah. So I thought I would do the same thing uh, today, all right. Mm -hmm. So this is about uh, how, uh, this is a mouthful, I do not know how to pronounce this actually, the Greek mathematician. Uh, Eratosthenes, yes, yes. Yeah, finally got it right. This uh, this part I had to memorize, <laughs> right? So Eratosthenes, he um, calculated the radius of the earth. So uh, we are going to talk about his method today. So before I go to that, I'd like to, uh, I know you know this, but uh, entertain me. So suppose you have two rays emerging from a point, let's say. Right. Yeah, so let's call this name. So rays OR and uh, OQ. Right. Okay. So, what do you understand by angle? So, uh, uh, angle is just defined as two rays starting from the same point. Yeah, starting. But, but we give a measure to the angle, right? right we right. say, okay, this is 30 degrees and what exactly is a degree then, right? Right. right. So, what's the uh, amount which you have to rotate one ray so that it overlaps? Yeah, but what, how is uh, the degree defined? Like, how do you, uh, yeah. So, the Greeks used to think about uh, this a uh, little bit differently. Degree, as we know, is a modern... Uh, concept right so uh, there's degree centigrade also degree centigrade and degree means basically what uh, you are uh, measuring from a certain level okay. right okay. so degree of hotness like what we are feeling right now right degree of hotness or <laughs> so degree centigrade that's uh, the zero is taken as the reference level zero being the uh, freezing point of water right right right, right. so uh, here uh, we are not going to use that uh, degree and all those things w what we are going to think of is that uh, I'm going to think of a circle so let's look at a circle over here and uh, let me ex uh, complete that circle. So you can see that I've drawn a circle right. and I've made sure that uh, as to my best of my abilities that uh, this oh, point O is O is the center of that circle. Okay. So angles, I look at the uh, region of the circle or as we call the arc of the circle right. that is trapped between the two rays. Okay. Okay. So if this happens to be one twelfth of the entire circle. Uh, then I say the angle is 112. That's good enough, right? right. That gives a measure of uh, uh, what an angle is, right? right? We so can it's measure. basically proportional to the <coughs> sector length. Right? Yeah, correct, correct. So this length. So of course, like you said, that, that's a good thing that you use there, proportional to that, right? So basically, you could you could have asked me which circle are you talking about here? Mm -hmm. Because you can think of uh, any, circle. any circle. So the thing is, if I had a bigger circle, mm -hmm. okay? So this would just be one twelfth the part of the bigger circle, the bigger circle right? right? right. So th th that's why they have defined it like that. Like you could take any circle, you could uh, have any circle of your choice, right. and uh, what you'd find is this uh, part that is trapped between the two rays mm -hmm. is still uh, the same fraction, right. Right. right? So this gives you an idea of what uh, angle is, and this is perhaps why. We denote angles with that symbol there. Right. So to talk about the, yes, yes, yes. yeah, the, the part of the yeah, the arc length, right? Oh, I never thought about that. <laughs> no, this, this is actually Srikanth Pai. He told me that, oh, right? right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so basically, when I write something like this, I mean, okay, this is the uh, this is the arc of that uh, complete circle over there. Okay. Is, All right. Is it uh, obvious that the angle at the center is proportional to the arc or no we could uh, we could think about it like uh, uh, so if you take uh, something like this so if you draw a circle out like that hmm. you can see you asked me whether it is obvious right so i do not know exactly how to answer that question but you can see over here this kind of this is kind of obvious right hmm. so if you ask me what is this angle over here i would say it's uh, one fourth of the circle right all right which circle again any circle of your choice right Right, and uh, if I were to divide this in half again, what we call as 45 degrees, mm -hmm. right? So you would see that this is one eighth of the circle, right? right? right. So you'd have to rely more on your intuition than uh, yeah. So this is the beginning of the math, right? Geometry. So we have to get some things from intuition over here, okay. right? So this is one twelfth. One twelfth is something that I've chosen mm -hmm. arbitrarily, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, before I go to the calculation of the radius of the earth, there is one more thing that you, I, I want you to tell us. 
So, suppose you have two rays directed uh, that way, right? Uh, we call those, the direction is same as I pointed out over here. And let's say there is one more ray that is uh, falling on these two rays, okay? And the direction of this ray is that way. Uh, again, could you notice that these two angles over here, right? But again, what do I mean by angles? I could complete the circle over here and uh, those two angles there are equal, are the same, right? Because obviously, that way direction and this way direction, right? You can see that uh, the angle would be same. So this we, is one of Euclid's axiom. This is one of the Euclid's axiom, yeah. Mm -hmm. See, that's a postulate, sorry, right, yeah. Yes, it's yes. fifth postulate, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, you can also see that uh, uh, you look at this part of the circle. I, we just concluded that this part of the circle over here, let's call that part as theta, and this part over here, theta, those two are equal. So, th these parts also must be equal, right? Okay. Right? And you can see there is a ray like this going like that. So, this part and this part over here must be the same. Okay. Correct? So, we are going, we call this as the alternating angle. So, you can see that this, if this is theta, mm -hmm. this also should be theta. Mm -hmm. Correct? And these are vertically opposite angles there. Okay. Okay. Yeah? yeah? So, this is what we, and this, these are only things that I need to know to go forward and calculate the radius of the earth. So, let me try to... So, this Greek mathematician was the first guy to calculate the radius of the calculate, earth? Calculate, yeah, I think so. Okay. But the idea that uh, earth is uh, round hmm. was, I think, uh, known Old to Aristotle. I think yeah. he saw that uh, the shadow that was cast by earth on the moon uh, came out to be uh, a circular, circular shape, oh, right? I so, see. that idea that earth isn't flat uh -huh. was known to Aristotle, I but see, see. Uh, I think... Uh, Calculating the radius of the earth was, was the Eratus uh, was the first guy to do that. That's right? I think a significant achievement, right? From quite, quite significant, quite significant. Because the value that we know today mm. and the value that was obtained by the Greek mathematician, yeah. Yeah, they closely re resemble, I right? See, see. So, you can uh, go forth. So, the method is simple. Mm. What he did was he went to, I think the story goes something like this, but do not take me too seriously on the story because... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I gone in uh, making my making up the story <laughs> as I go along, right? Yeah. So the story goes something like this. So uh, he found that uh, a stick that was planted in uh, mm. the city of Alexandria, I believe, mm. uh, casted no shadow. I see. Is that the same as that zero shadow day? We, that we, we have MPN's zero shadow day. I mm. think it's the same thing that, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So zero shadow day. So what's the benefit of that? You could tell your friend in... Uh, Bangalore or some city like that to uh, plant a stick and measure the radius of the earth, I mean, uh, <laughs> the length of the shadow and based on that you could figure out how big the earth is. Oh, nice. Right? That's the, that's, that's the, yeah, that's interesting. So, w then he moved himself to a new, uh, another city and look at the pain that you have to go through to calculate this. So, he went to another city and planted a stick uh, over there and uh, on the same day, mm -hmm. Right? So, suppose he measured the length of the shadow on July, I don't know, 22nd. Okay. okay. On July 22nd, in that city, he measured the uh, length of the shadow. Yeah, shadow there. So, what he sees is that uh, this particular stick casts some shadow over here. Right? So, now, an assumption that I'm going to make. Right? So, you know that sun is very far from the earth. Right? So, you also know that it gives out light uh, all in all directions. Let's assume that uh, it gives out light in every direction in equal amounts, okay. alright? So, since it's very far away, the rays of light that come from the sun are nearly parallel to the, sorry, what do you say, are nearly parallel to each other, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, you can see that uh, if, it, if this sticks, mm -hmm. stick over there casts no shadow, mm -hmm. then the ray of light mm -hmm. must be going through that stick, right? Okay, okay. Right? So, you've got a ray of light that is going through the center of the earth. If I just extend that, right? right? It would go through the center of the earth. So, let me uh, draw that ray over here. Okay? And I told you, earth is very far from the sun. Mm -hmm. So, there would be another parallel ray that is uh, going to come like this. Do you see any... <laughs> Yeah, these um, are parallel lines. So uh, yeah, these are parallel lines. Maybe some and angles. Here there is a, a shadow. Yeah. Yeah, and I can extend this 
uh, direction of the stick like this through the center of the earth. Right. Yeah. Now do you see what I'm talking about? Yeah. Couple of angles will be equal. Yeah. Couple of angles will be equal. Right. And if you know the distance between the two cities, look at that. Mm -hmm. If you know the distance between the two cities, right. uh, let's say that distance, I'll tell you the value of this, okay. but let's say, let's give it some uh, letters there. Let's uh, indicate the, that particular distance with the letter S. Okay. So suppose you know the distance over here, mm -hmm. And if you somehow knew this angle, what do I mean by the angle again? Angle meaning if I knew what part of the circle uh, is this over here, Correct. what is the part of the circle it is, Correct. then I would know what is the circumference of the earth. Because it's proportional. It's proportional, right? So, so yeah, the question is now how do you figure out the angle? Angle you need to find. That angle. <laughs> so, the angles, what can you say about the angles? angles. How yeah, so, this yeah. Angle? The thing is, if I knew this angle, if I knew what part of the circle it is, hmm. I could figure out the uh, circumference of this particular circle, right? It's the same way here. If yeah, same this thing. Was 1 12th, one twelfth. The whole will yeah, be. Yeah. If this is the... one twelfth, then I would know that the entire circle is twelve multiplied by that distance, right? right? Right. So here, uh, how do we figure out that angle? Now, let me just uh, draw this out for you over here. Let me just uh, expand that out. So here are the two rays that I've drawn and uh, here is the ray that is going from the center of the earth like that. I'm just trying, trying to draw that right and uh, uh, somewhere over here, uh, yeah. So now can you see what I'm talking about? Here's the center of the earth, right? I want to know what this angle is. That's the same as this angle. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So it's the same as that angle. Do you see that? Yeah. So I needed to figure out this angle over here, mm. but it turns out if I figure out the angle over here, right. my job would be done. Right. And that angle we can measure from the measurements. Yeah, because because you see, you know the height of the pole. See, this is the pole here, right? Right. You can figure. You know the height of the pole. Correct. Right. And uh, you can measure the length of the shadow that the, that is cast. Okay. It just falls on the ground. You just right. have to take a meter scale and just measure the length of the shadow. Okay. And uh, okay. this does not require much of trigonometry knowledge now, yeah. right? So now that you know this, the length of the shadow, and you know the uh, height of the pole, yeah. let's say, okay. yeah, you can easily figure out the angle. Yeah. So this angle over here, that's the fascinating part. This angle over here and th that angle at the center of the earth are okay. exactly the same. Yeah. And do you know what the value is of that angle? What did he? I what? think he. Uh, uh, I'm not very sure. <laughs> no, no, you know. <laughs> Somewhere around 1 by 50th, you were saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1 by 50th, yes. So he found that uh, he found that this angle over here is 1 50th of a circle. So this part of the circle is 1 50th of the entire circle that is there. Okay. So now coming to this part. So I know this angle here is 1 50th. It's amazing that an observation that you make has such a big consequence, right? Exactly. And yeah. From geometry, you can say it's the same angle. Same angle, yeah. That, the that's, that, that's the thing, earth. yeah. The center of the earth, yeah. <laughs> that's the power that uh, knowledge gives you, you see, right? So you see that uh, now this is 150th, and he knew, I told you I'll give you the value of that uh, length, right? So he knew that the distance between the cities was 800 kilometers. Of course, the Greeks did not use uh, kilometers to measure distances, it's uh, 500 stadia, as they called it. Right. So I'm writing it in uh, today's terms. So 800 kilometers, and I told you that is this part is 150th of the entire uh, circle. Right. So from that you can uh, say that the circumference of the Earth, circumference, is equal to 800, the part of the circle trapped over here, multiplied by 50, because I told you this is 150th of the part. Okay. 150th of the circle. Right. Okay. So 800 into 50, that will come out to be uh, 40,000 kilometer, right? Cool. Luckily, this was an easy multiplication to do. I brought the calculator just in case, right? So 40,000 kilometer, and this comes out to be the circumference of the Earth, right? Now we were interested in the radius of the Earth. Now you know the easy formula there. So the radius of the Earth, uh, uh, I may write yeah. as the circumference circumference by a very famous constant that you have talked about, uh, that is 2 pi, right? Circumference by 2 pi. So circumference is uh, 40,000 kilometers 
divided by 2 pi uh, whose value I know, uh, I do not know, <laughs> I need to uh, use the calculator for this. So, 2 pi would be, let us see, okay, I kind of knew this, yes, 6.28, yes, 6.28. So, if I were to do this division, let me put that in the calculator, so 40,000 divided by 6.28 that comes out to be 6369 kilometers. Wow. We know now. With <laughs> all the fancy equipments, we know now we have better values than this, of course. 6400. 6378, something we say. And we know that it's bulged around the equator and all those things. Wow. And we know these, these things. But the fascinating part is it does not require any knowledge beyond high school geometry, right? 8th standard, if you are done with 8th standard and you have got the curiosity, you can figure out the radius of the earth. So, just with a stick. Just with a stick. And some but the thing is, you need to admire uh, the patience and the dedication of the mathematician because he had to go 800 kilometers to another city, okay, to figure out uh, this one little thing. <laughs> so, it is like the mathematician had to go 800 kilometers to figure out uh, the radius of the earth. I would just uh, wait somebody else to do it and uh, uh, pretend like I figured it out, but uh, it takes a lot of pain, right? So, 6369 kilometers is what we have got through simple geometry to be the radius of the earth. Wow. Yes. <laughs> it is really cool. That is really cool, yes. Right? Yeah. So, uh, today was just me and Mervyn talking about uh, calculation of the radius uh, of the earth and uh, if you would like us to do some more videos like this, please like and sub subscribe and also hit the bell icon and if you have got some comments, if you have got some uh, ideas that we could uh, talk about, please uh, give us the comments.